Hello, today I'm going to be sorting out my hammer and tool storage so it's all just a little bit more organised. This is my current setup, so you see we've got all hammers running along here, tongs, different tongs, then hardy tools and hand tools at the back over there, and then some brushes and things and oily rags and stuff. But you see that that takes up a lot of space, you know, it's coming in off the wall and also it's quite wide. So my plan is to put it all on the wall, as you see, I've got loads of wall space there. That little, um, this little thing is a, a, a basically a variable resistor for my fan back there, so I can sort of change the motor speed, so change the revs, to change the air going into the forge, there's a light. Um, <laughs> but it doesn't work. So I'm just going to have to work around that. I really need to get it fixed at some point and put a new one on, which I think would be an interesting video so I can actually get the fan working off a variable resistor rather than literally at the moment all that I'm doing is moving the fan to change the amount of air going into the forge. Anyway, I'm going to be getting all of these tools onto the wall. I'll probably do a few different racks as I'll obviously need a hammer rack, a tong rack, uh, hardy tool rack, there were my hardy tools over there, um, and then also hand tools. So there'll be a few different things that I've got to make, and then also you see that I've already got some hanging up they're, they're wrenches and uh, not wrench, uh, yeah, bending forks and a rasp and a uh, twisting, twisting wrench. So they all need to be on the wall over there as well. But that means that I can free up some floor space as all of this is going to be on the wall, so I can then move the vice into the corner and maybe also move an anvil back over to this side. The first thing that I'm going to do is try and salvage some of the bits off of this rack. So I'm going to be cutting bits out and then welding those together. So I am going to be welding some of them up just for speed so that I can, you know, welding is much more quicker than trying to forge out a load of tenons and rivet it all together so I can actually get it all done today because that's I need to get it all done and on the wall so that then next week I'm actually working in a workshop where everything is nice and tidy. I do want to forge one out properly so do one with all forged tenons and all nice mechanical joints rather than welding it uh, but I think most of them I am just going to quickly weld up so I need to get all the tools off, cut bits out, weld those together and then I can get to actually forging a proper one out and show you how to do it the more traditional way. This one that I've welded up is going to be for the hammers, that's why it's got two bars, so the handle can go down there, the face will rest on there and the peen on the back. The one I want to forge is going to be for the tongs, so that only needs one bar and then the tongs will rest just like that over a single bar. This mad contraption is for the uh, tools, hand tools, so I, I keep them in tins and so I can get four tins in there which is pretty much enough for all of the hand punches and chisels and things that I have. I'm going to start working on the long piece for this rack. So I've got to forge a tenon on both ends and then I've also got to go and forge a load more tenons for all of the other components but we'll do that after. So I'll get this in the fire and show you how I'm going to forge a tenon on the end. I'll come on the near edge of the anvil and just be accurate with my hammer blows working on four sides to try section off some material for the tenon. I'll trim some of the end off and then we can get a monkey tool on there which is basically just a block of steel with a hole in to upset the shoulder so we get a nice square shoulder on the tenon.
There we are, we've got a nice square shoulder. So I'll just forge a load more tenons on all of the other components and then get back uh, filming once I've got all those ready for the assembly. Here are some of the other components. This is like the main bar coming out of the back plate. So that'll go through that hole. It's a blind rivet, so it's got a countersink, countersunk hole. So when we upset that, it'll create a nice flush backing to sit against the wall. This has a hole in there, which is going to be for the longer bar. So the longer bar can come off there. And then we have this, which is a support piece. So that's then going to go there. Obviously, I need to drill the holes in the back plate and the arm for this piece. But that, you'll notice, obviously has these weird bends on, and that's so that the shoulder of the tenon is sitting perpendicular to the arm and the back plate. As if we leave this straight, then they're going to be at the 45, and it's not going to fit up. So we've got to have that bend in so that they become nice and square. I'll put some of these pieces in the fire, and we can begin to assemble it and rivet all of these tenons over. little bit too much material there but we can always just grind that off and then it'll be nice and flush. I've managed to get this in here which was a bit of a task as I should have really riveted this onto there first and then riveted both of them onto the back plate at the same time but I've now got it stuck in there I can't get it out and I forgot to put a countersink on this side so there's just gonna have to be a rivet head on this one. Uh, I've also I've normalized this so hopefully I can rivet it cold without it cracking. I've got a screw on this side already, so I can get it nice and level. Mark me hole, and then drill it. Put me plug in. Now I'll get it fixed on the side there with a screw. Now I'll go through the screw holes with a smaller drill bit to mark where I need to drill these next holes. I think I'm going to have to miss that one, unfortunately, but I'll get a fixing in the other side. Uh, then take it down, drill the hole, put plug in, screw, do it over and over again for all of the other pieces, and then we'll have it all on the wall. So here's everything now on the wall. You can see that it's freed up loads of space on the floor. So I've moved the anvils around and got my water trough in the, in the back there. And now, yeah, so it's all nice on the walls. I have had to put the, the hammers and the tools there quite high, but the tongs are lower, you see, because I can then, if I ever need to move this vice, I can move it into the corner there and still have it quite close into the wall. But the hammers, I didn't want to put the hammers directly above the tongs as then it would be quite annoying when you're trying to get the tongs out that'd be in the way of the hammer handle. So I put them off to the side here above the actual vise. But uh, the reason why I've been doing this is because I've got some new equipment. I've just got a uh, new, old, old, new to me MIG welder. Um, so I've had to move things about. So I moved the fly press a bit more central and then uh, move things over. 
but yeah it has freed up a lot of space putting the stuff up there and i've also organized it so i can hang like my my bending forks twisting wrenches and grasp and a hacksaw and all sorts of stuff on the edge of this hammer rack as well just on these little little pins that sort of stick out and hooks every so often as well so um yeah that's about it i've, I've then for the um hardy tools i put my hardy tools over here on this side as i didn't really have any more space over there so they're, they're over here with a couple of smaller hammers there it's a bit dark that but there's a couple of small hammers and actually a hammer i punch over there as well so that's about it thank you for watching the video i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one <laughs>